Hey guys, here we go into a video analyzing Manny Pacquiao's pad work, his pad work routine, pad work habits, uh, the good things that apply and, and kind of amplify his speed and power and explosiveness. It's going to be a lot of what we talk about. Um, and then some of the bad habits in some of his pad work as well. Um, whoever that guy on TikTok is, thank you. Um, but we're going to be taking a look at those things uh, as well as how they kind of apply to these clips as well. Um, we're going to be taking a look at these clips as we want to understand how Manny Pacquiao is going to respond to the lead hand control of Errol Spence, right? The lead hand. This is going to be very, very, very important. Um, and we're going to talk about how that affects the pad work and all that stuff. But this is going to be a very, very important idea because of the way that Manny Pacquiao reacts to lead hand control. We're going to be analyzing this clip in relation to Manny Pacquiao's uh, pad work theory and stuff. Uh, as well as taking a look at this pad work here, all the way in the back here. Um, where is it? Uh, we're going to be taking a look at some clips here in this pad work. And then also, we're going to be taking a look at these clips here. Okay? And we're going to look at this clip here. So first off, this is where we're going to start. Keith Thurman. This is Manny Pacquiao shooting an excellent pull counter. And what I want to establish here about this pull counter is that when Manny Pacquiao moves his head off the line to the back foot, he immediately enters the line with his right hand, okay? Shooting his right hand and using this right hand to line up his body mechanics, okay? And this is a drill, this is a technique that he gets from his pad work, a habit that he gets from his pad work that allows him to start lining up that left hand into that right hook. Again, we're gonna watch that just one more time. Boom, back foot, boom, boom, boom. And he's in position. We don't care that he gets hit after. He does a great job of exiting the line, emptying the line, entering the line. Now, we're going to take a look at another one of these pieces of pad work habits that he gets is this counter jab here, okay? So not really a counter jab, but as his opponent meets him on the line, he's going to be taking a step forward, right? Trying to enter the line and trying to attack him with this lead hand. And Pacquiao's going to use that right hook maneuver to kind of attack him around it. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is the position that Manny Pacquiao is in when he throws this counter, okay? It's a very, very, very particular position, and his, his foot is planted here, and he's waiting for Keith Thurman to come into his line, okay? So he takes that step, and Manny Pacquiao now transitions his weight towards his back foot, and then look at his front foot, okay? As he does this, he pendulum steps forward to get the distance to be able to land this kind of cross punch here. Now we're going to take a look, look at him do it a couple more times. Again, this is while Keith Thurman is trying to get his weight onto the front foot and trying to get that timing. Now, again, Manny Pacquiao kind of using that pendulum step motion, shooting all his way from the front foot to shoot his hips backwards and take this lead foot dominant position as he throws this hook. Here he goes, front foot here. And as Keith Thurman is taking this step and transitioning his weight forward, Pacquiao is timing him around the guard with that motion. Again, kind of a pendulum hook that shoots his weight to the back foot. And this is one of the ways that Manny Pacquiao controls the space between him and his opponents. Now, we're going to take a look at Manny Pacquiao's pad work and how these, these drills or how these, these kind of attacks kind of come out. So this is how Manny Pacquiao trains the first one, okay? The, or the second one, the, the hook counter, okay? Wait, where is it? Did I miss it already? No, here he is here. So he's planted on the line, and he's going to be waiting for Reddy, Freddie Roach here to move into his line here, and he's going to be throwing this hook, okay? But what I want you to pay attention to is Freddie Roach's body mechanics, okay? Manny Pacquiao is waiting in that similar position, right? In that very particular position on the line, and he's waiting for Freddie Roach's body mechanics to drive forward so he can time that punch, okay? That's what Manny Pacquiao is practicing here. It's his way of controlling his opponent's attempt to get to the front foot, okay? Now, this is very, very, very similar to the Errol Spence pad work, right? And how Errol Spence is constantly moving forward on the line, as Freddie Roach is doing here, and then off the line after the counter. And Errol Spence meets on the line at the same time, and then off. There's kind of a pendulum between the two. As one goes on the line, the other goes on the line, they make their engagement happen, and then they both move off the line. Now, what I want to point out here, this is a very, very stark contrast between what's going on between Pacquiao and Roach, as Pacquiao is always looking to get planted first, 
okay? He's looking to meet on the line, and then he practices it, having his opponent move into him, okay? Now, we're going to take a look at that again one more time in the Pacquiao video, okay? Keith Thurman taking that step. Their feet kind of get tangled, so he misses there. Uh, let's go back a couple more here. Taking that step in, bringing his weight forward, Pacquiao timing him with the cross, right? With the hook on the outside, exactly like he practices on the pads, okay? Now he's going to do the same thing a bunch of times more as Keith Thurman tries to come forward, right? Mimicking the weight, right? Because as your opponent, your, your opponent's pad work or your, your pad work holder, they are mimicking your opponent's shoulder faint timing, right? The moment, the the rhythm and timing at which they bring their body weight to the line, and then they can start making attacks, right? So as Keith Thurman brings his weight to the line, Pacquiao has been taught, as you can see here, he's taking that step forward to control the space here. Now, what I want to point out though, Manny Pacquiao has a terrible habit of always controlling the space with punches, okay? This becomes a big problem for him later in the fight as Keith Thurman starts to pick up on it. Now here, why did Manny Pacquiao not counter him here? Why did he allow Keith Thurman to go all the way over here and start going kind of, you know, kind of ape shit and attacking him? Well, because of the fact that Manny Pacquiao looks to get settled in that position and he looks to get his weight on that front foot. So here he is getting settled. He's in the position. He's ready to let that counter go as soon as Keith Thurman enters the line. But Keith Thurman resets. He doesn't want to get on the line yet. He doesn't want to start taking that step in because he knows that Pacquiao's been cracking him. So he starts controlling Pacquiao. And this tells Pacquiao that he has to get off the line because now he's being controlled and he may not be ready for the next um, weight transition, the next attack, the next whatever, right? So he starts moving with his natural rhythm because he was on the line. Now he has to move off the line, right? And this gives Keith Thurman the opportunity to make his attack on Pacquiao's line because Pacquiao doesn't get to be in the extremely, extremely rehearsed counterpunch position that he only practices that attack, that technique in, okay? As we can see here, even though he starts countering, right? It's the same position, right? Now, real quick, I wanna talk about this idea. He throws this, this hook, and then see how he throws a little shoe shine in there with all these punches? This is a very, very brilliant technique here um, to add into his technique or into his routine. Uh, one of the things that you want to do, right? Now, one of my boxing theories is that one of the best ways to improve a specific technique is to add a technique to it, okay? Because in order to pull the technique off correctly, the second technique, you're going to have to make sure that you do the first technique absolutely perfectly. Otherwise, the body mechanics, the rhythm, the pace, the flow, you're going to feel that you're off, that it's not working. You're gonna know that it's wrong, okay? So by doing things like this, throwing that same counter and then adding a shoe shine to it, he can, he can stress his technique and actually use this technique to make his hook better, okay? Because it's gonna put more pressure on the style of technique. Now, we're gonna take a look at him doing a few more techniques here, okay? This is a, some more of the good ones, okay? Um, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the uh, a few more of the hooks and stuff. Actually, let's go ahead and show the, the detriment to the hook here. So again, Pacquiao has a trouble getting into that same rehearsed position, right? Here he is trying to let that hook go. He's trying to bring this shoulder forward to meet Keith Thurman on the line so he can whip him with that hook as Keith Thurman takes that step forward. But Keith Thurman probes. He uses the lead hand control here, right? Instead of taking that step forward here and getting ready to attack, he controls Pacquiao, and now on this rhythm and timing, Pacquiao has to leave this position. So we're going to watch Pacquiao's foot. As Pacquiao leaves that position, he can no longer transition his weight into a big hook because he's stepping off the line. And Keith Thurman is able to take advantage of that and, pa and Manny Pacquiao's inability to be in that correct position to counter. Now, all of that, Pacquiao winds up in none of the positions that he's ready to counter in. Okay? So now here, Keith Thurman coming forward. He's probing. And he's taking that step forward, and Pacquiao's having a hard time timing him with that hook here. As you can see, not really getting a great piece of him, but Keith Thurman doing a good job of feinting and drawing that shot out and making it miss just a little more each time until by the end of the fourth round, he's timing it and countering Pacquiao. 
Again, because Pacquiao has a very, very, very particular position in which he likes to control the space, okay? Now, what I want you to think about is Floyd Mayweather's pull counter, okay? Now, everyone thinks Floyd Mayweather has the best pull counter in boxing. It's just not true. His pull counter sucks, okay? Every single person Mayweather fought beat Mayweather's pull counter. Every single one, even Carlos Baldemir. Mayweather was trying to bait on the front foot. He got fainted by a jab and then punched by a two. Carlos Baldemir outsmarted him. The reason he was able to outsmart it is because Manny Mayweather likes to put himself in that very particular position, that very rehearsed position. And as we can see against the high-level fighter, right, maybe this is one of the reasons that uh, Keith Thurman is saying that Mayweather ducked him because of the fact that Keith Thurman starts figuring that position out. Because Keith Thurman is a professional fighter. Professional fighters figure things out. They have patterns and traps. They've been doing this long enough that the same crap, the same, you know, cheesy tactics are not going to work, right? At this point, Mayweather has to start ducking under the line, but that's not here or there, okay? Getting back to the film study, I want you to pay attention to the idea that Keith Thurman is able to do this because he's using lead hand controls. We see that little tiny probe out of Keith Thurman. See that glove come forward? This is his glove right here, this white, okay? He's controlling that position, okay? Now, hop topic here. This allows Keith Thurman to protect this position here so that he can make it on the line with Manny Pacquiao and then start setting up other attacks, okay? So he uses this probe to protect his position, okay? And then he can use his probes to protect his punches, all right? This is a very, very, very important idea, okay? And when you don't do that, we've already seen how Manny Pacquiao can just kind of smack you up, right? He's fast, he's able to do that, but he's not invincible, okay? And again, that's a habit that he learns. He learns that position and that countering style from his pad work right there. Now, we're going to take a look at another thing that Pacquiao does very well, okay? It's his one-twos, right? And his one-two, one-twos, okay? Here he is getting on the line shooting one-two, one-two, right? So here he starts with one-two, just jab, left cross, right? And then he gets on the line, jab, left cross, boom, faster and faster. And this is where he adds a layer to it, right? Remember I was talking earlier about how you want to start chaining them together and adding things to them to make those previous techniques better. So here we go. He's gonna add to it one, two, one, two, boom. In order to make his one, two better, he just adds a one, two to it, right? The theory there, stressing his technique, being in constant motion, okay? Now, real quick, I wanna interject, and I wanna kinda of bring up a pad work routine. So I have my own pad work routine that I am teaching. This one's for beginners and intermediate uh, fighters. Uh, who need to learn and develop their position one, that they want to develop better coordination, better speed, better power. Um, and, you know, better coordination is the most important thing I want to talk about. Um, I will teach you with this Vimeo, this Vimeo set of pad work. I will teach you not only how to hold the pads, but I will teach you how to hit the pads. And if you know the rules of hitting the pads, no matter who holds the pads for you, you will always be doing everything right as long as you follow the rules, okay? And then, if you have someone who knows the rules of pad work and knows the rules of striking, they can more easily develop routines for you. So, this Vimeo package is perfect for people who are not only looking to uh, learn the beginnings of pad works, and here we're gonna show just a real quick drill that we're gonna be doing. This is the first drill, it's a one, two, and then your opponent's gonna be countering the two with the hook and we're gonna be blocking. Now, how do we make this very, very, very common, very, very, very common boxing pattern? Uh, how do we practice this? Well, we're gonna practice this with this drill and this is gonna help us learn position one, right? And learn our straight punches simply by repeating this particular drill. And this is gonna help him learn the coordination for getting across the line, for blocking punches as well as slipping punches because moving your head is a big function of learning how to punch, okay? It's a very, very, very important idea. So uh, check out my nine drill pad work series. Um, I'm gonna put this little clip up here. These are some of the, uh, the comments on them. Uh, not very many people leave comments or you know um, testimonials or whatever, but if you do, I really appreciate it. Uh, but these are the testimonials so far. Uh, 
One of them is a pro fighter. One of them is a part of my Patreon. Um, he's going to be a pro fighter. He's fantastic. I actually have one of his fights on my um, – one of his amateur fights on my Patreon if you guys want to check it out, fully broken down. There are even some highlights of it on YouTube. Um, um, but, yeah. Anyway, there's also a promo code, uh, Pac-Man or The Truth. Uh, depending on whether you're a Pacquiao fi uh, fan or an Errol Spence fan, it's 25% uh, off. Go ahead and check it out. Um, and yeah, it, it's an excellent, excellent Vimeo series um, and, and pad work series to kind of teach you the mechanics of pad work, teach you the mechanics of uh, position one, position two, crossing the line, um, how to hold the pads, how to hit the pads. Um, you're going to learn a lot, okay? You're going to learn a lot, um, and it's going to teach you some pretty advanced pad work stuff as well. Um, just check it out. It, it, it's very, very much worth your money and worth your time. So here we go into the next part of Manny Pacquiao's pad work and some of the flaws, okay? So one thing that I want to point out is that almost all of his combinations start with his jab from his back foot, okay? Now, most people say obviously. Right? Obviously, they're going to start with the jab most of the time, but almost all the time. And one of the problems with this is Pacquiao uses the jab to line up his body mechanics. Okay, we're going to look at that first jab. Boom. Look at how it raises his shoulder here, right? It brings his head to the back half of his line. This allows him to set his weight on the back foot to charge up his big left hand, right? And the left hand that he throws to the body here, he transfers all of his weight across the line and the purpose of that first left hand, or that first right hand, is to line up those body mechanics, okay? Now, there's nothing in explicitly wrong with the fact that he starts all of his combinations here, right? Because it's a great way to build his body mechanics and get that really good one-two, right? As we can see, boom, boom. Now, we're going to go back and look at the pad work real quick, or look at the, the first one. Push off the line, and look at him. One, two. Right Again, he starts his pull counter combination with the jab, not with his left hand, right? Mayweather starts his with the left hand. Pacquiao starts his with his right hand, right? His, his jab instead. And this is because he practices almost all of his combinations leading with a big jumping in pendulum left hand. Now, it's not a normal jab, okay? He likes to jump forward and shift his weight to the back foot with this punch, okay? Now we're going to see him do some more bop, 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 right? But again, look at how he jumps in with the jab first. And again, this creates some of those bad habits in the ring because even though he can counter with this and he can use these techniques, we're going to take a look at a few more examples and then we're going to look at the video again. A little bit of pull countering here, a little bit of good work, but here... He's actually practicing his countering again for that same timing. As his opponent moves in, into range, stepping forward, Pacquiao again is planted for this version of the shoulder feint timing, right? Drawing his opponent in. So, so watch um, Freddie Roach as he takes a step in and brings his weight forward and Pacquiao meets him with the mitts, right? But again, for this drill... Pacquiao's planted, okay? He's not in motion with his opponent. Uh, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit different how the, the mechanics of that work when his opponent starts fainting him again and choosing that position. Again, let's take a look at that Errol Spence clip again. Look at how active Errol Spence actually is with his lead hand. Even though he does have a bad habit of committing and stepping with his jab, right, which does allow him to be countered, even though he doesn't always punch with it, he doesn't always control the space very well either, allowing Bundu in there. I do think there are some, some counters too. There's going to be a counter somewhere. But as we can see here, Errol Spence able to control him very similarly to the way that Keith Thurman was able to control Manny Pacquiao, right? Allowing him the space to freely throw this punch as he walks in. Now watch the rhythm of Errol Spence's motion, right? See how he's going to be taking this step here and then driving forward with this big left hand? That's the motion that Keith Thurman is looking to protect when he's using his lead hand. And, and as we can see here, Errol Spence is using his lead hand to control Bundu, put Bundu in that high guard, right? And that allows him to protect his big pendulum punch, right? He's allowed to use this motion because Bundu is occupied upstairs with the probing jab into that body shot. Now, 
Errol Spence doesn't always use the probing jab, and that's the problem. He doesn't always use it to control. Sometimes he gets caught countering it, right? So now, again, we're going to take a look at a few more clips of Pacquiao practicing his one-twos. Bop, right? Here he is again with that jab. His opponent gets on the line with him, right? Or practicing his one-two, right? But almost all of his combinations stemming from the jab first. Now, again, we're going to take a look at how that negatively impacts him in the ring as well in a second, but I want to see a couple more of his drills, okay? Now, beautiful. This is another one of his really cool drills. Hook, uppercut, right? Hook, uppercut, great. Hook, uppercut, hook, straight left hand. Look at how he adds to the drill to increase not only the difficulty, but stress his technique. That's actually going to make the first two punches so much better, knowing that he has to maintain proper body mechanics to still set up this pendulum left hand. And watch what he's going to do. Boom, boom. And he's going to throw this left hand, right? Now this right hook. Now watch as he throws this right hook. He's going to be taking this step here. Bop. To set up that left hand. Now again, when Pacquiao likes to throw his jab, that's the same motion, okay? Boom, boom. This motion with his hips. His hips are going to turn. His foot's going to shoot this way right? This is the same motion he likes to use when he throws his regular jab, when he initiates a combination, like that jab right there, that kind of hook, hook motion there. But let's kind of take a look at a couple more of the drills, and we're going to take a look at it in, in, uh, in the fight, okay? Come on, Pacquiao, throw some punches. There you go. So again, practicing the timing as his opponent comes forward. Pacquiao's planted as Freddie Roach takes that step. He's meeting him there. Again, it's not very conducive to being fainted and probed, right? Very dangerous to practice it in only that one fashion. Now, again, his opponent taking a step into him, boom. He's not meeting him on the line. He's already in his trap position, okay? Now, come on, Pacquiao, throw some one-twos or whatever. Bop. Here he is entering the line with the jab, right? Now, look at this jab. See how his head is rested on his front foot? He's going to shoot this jab and transfer his weight to the back foot now. Boom. Now see how his, most of his weight is kind of centered toward the back half of his line? His head is more towards this side than this side. His back shoulder is more back than forward, right? Whoops. He's looking to use that pendulum motion as he transfers his weight to the front foot and then shift out of it with that jab and then set that same punch up. As you can see, he crossed the line. He transferred his weight to the front foot. He's lining up his jab for this mitt. And again, he's going to shoot that pendulum jab, which shifts his weight to the back foot to line up that big left hand, okay? Now, that's exactly the way that he practices his left hand and his one-twos and all that stuff almost all the time. This is how it looks in the fight, okay? This is Pacquiao being pushed off his line, right? And not finding himself in a position where he can shoot his jab and get to the back half of his line until here, okay? Notice this whole situation here, okay? Not only is he not able to get into his very predictable shoulder feint uh, timing counter with his shoulder forward because Keith Thurman is controlling him with the jab, control, getting around the line, right, with the body shot, but he can't get in that line. But Pacquiao is also having a very difficult time using his left hand to shoot his jab, right? To get that punch off, to line up his body mechanics, right? As we watch his feet here, set up to bring his shoulder back to start blasting forward with that left hand again. He always practices that pendulum left hand. So he has a very, very, very difficult time during the normal rotation of the fight getting into the habit, okay? Now look at this. This is, well, we're gonna look at this clip. We're gonna look at it and happen, look at it happen again here. Again, Pacquiao trying to use that same position, getting jabbed in the face. Try to use that same position, getting controlled. Trying to use that same position for the hook. He's going to let it go here. Tries to circle out. Good job. But again, same position. And now, look at as he meets him on the line, shooting that jab with the quick one-two, right? Bop, bop, right? One-two. He continues it up with the follow-up shot there. And then again, starts off his next combination with his left or his right jab, which lines up his body mechanics to start throwing his next shot, right? Again, he's using this punch. Now also, watch him lean uh, lean forward and then start penduluming his weight backwards. See, his weight is shifted on the front foot here, right? Boom, 
Now it's on the front foot. Now he's taking that step. He's going to shift his weight back. And as he shifts his weight back, now all his weight is here. His hip is coming this way, right? So that his toe is going to be this way. All this stuff. So that now he can start shifting his weight forward, right? But again, he practices this, this habit and this pattern of only shooting that pendulum jab, right? There he is slipping to the front foot. Bad habit, just a little toss in, guys. Don't pivot on the front foot or against a, an elite athlete, okay? Here's Keith Thurman all the way on the back foot. He's all the way on the back foot. Keith Thurman, uh, Manny Pacquiao's on the front foot. Manny Pacquiao's going to abandon that position with his pivot, and he's going to eat a body shot, boom, for no reason, okay? Number one, Pacquiao had the dominant position here. He's on the front foot. If Keith Thurman enters the line and makes an attack while Pacquiao's in this position, all Pacquiao needs to do is throw the right hook over the top, end of the night. Fight's over. You never want to enter someone's line when they're on the front foot here because they can do goddamn anything from this position. Anything, anything, anything. It's the most dangerous position. Keith Thurman is on the back foot. This is the most submissive position in the ring. You are losing if you are here. This is not the position you want to be entering the line from. And this is the exact problem that many Pacquiao is having with his, with his hook as he has to enter the line in a more submissive position because that's the one he practices on the line, okay? That's the one he practices throwing his hook from. So, again, having a, a difficult time letting his counters go because he can't get into those positions to shoot his, shoot his jab first, okay? Now, we're going to take a look again. Here at some more of Manny Pacquiao's pad work. Again, one-twos, right? Always initiating with that pendulum jab to the back foot into that left hand. Again, there's a lot of really great stuff in, in the Manny Pacquiao pad work here. A lot of great stuff. The explosiveness. Okay. Oh, yeah. We have one more clip here. Manny Pacquiao versus uh, Southpaw hold, pad holder. Okay? Now, here he is increasing his speed and his power through stress of his technique, okay? Now, how does he do that? By here's his drill, uppercut, right hook, into straight left hand to the body, into right hook, into a shoe shine, into another rolling hook, into some more rolling hooks. All of this stuff that he's not hitting the mitts, this is all great for him and his technique and his rhythm and his boxing. Um, but it's a drill for striking, okay? It's not a boxing drill. Now, we're going to talk about, again, this is the beautiful part, right? This great. Now, this is the part that's worrisome, okay? Look at how he gets back on the line. And immediately when he's getting back on the line with his, with his coach, he enters the line with that big pendulum jab, bop, bop, right? Shooting that jab to the back foot, boom, boom, but taking a big step with it, okay? Very, very, very important that we pay attention to this, okay? Because that's, again... A very difficult position for him to always have to be into is one where he can shoot the jab from a front, pos front foot position, shift his weight to the back foot to shift forward um, to throw that big left hand. And again, here he is practicing that speed and power always with the right hand, right hand into the left hook, right? Or bop, 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 right? And there he is practicing it again, starting with that same pendulum jab, boom, 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 boom even though there's a lot of good things attached to it, right? What do we know about the things that are great about, about Manny Pacquiao? What do we know about him? Well, he's easy to hit. He doesn't protect his line very often. He doesn't protect his punches all that well. And here we can see him just jumping on the line. He throws a lot of punches. He's really fast and dynamic. Well, here he is practicing really fast and dynamic, right? This is where it comes from. It's the stress and his technique and the constant combination punching. Now, he also doesn't practice very many different head slots, right? He doesn't practice head movement in his pad drills. Again, another thing that you'll learn in my pad work drills is defense, not just offense, but defense as well. So check them out. Again, they are amazing drills um, and yada, yada, yada. So again, but Manny Pacquiao, very limited in his routine as his routine always starts in a very similar fashion here, right? Again, um, the boxing portion of Manny Pacquiao's drilling doesn't leave him a lot of room, I'll say here, to counter punches 
in his high guard, okay? As we can see in his pad work routine, if he's going to be using this as a defense, how come he doesn't practice it, right? How come he is not in his high guard here practicing counter punches, right? In the mitts, right? Think about that idea. If it's going to be such a staple of his defense, right? If he's going to be put into this position so often, right? Even though he's blocking a decent amount of those punches, he he shouldn't have to wait until an opportun until he finds an opportunity to shoot a big pendulum jab and step into his punches, right? He shouldn't have to. He's a great fighter. He should be able to find himself in position more often to make his attacks than just how often he finds himself again meeting on the line and entering with that pendulum jab. Boom, 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 right? Very predictable, right? Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, for all you Pac fans, I know you guys don't like what I had to say. I know. Pacquiao's not Bundu. I know you're going to say that. Pacquiao's... All-time great, I know. Pacquiao is, he's what? Um, his moves are too good for you to analyze. He's so unorthodox, you can't analyze him. Bullshit. He's so absolute textbook. It's just that your boxing coach doesn't know what the textbook looks like. Uh, anyway, if you want more boxing coaching, if you want personal coaching like this, if you want me to analyze your technique, your positions, your heavy bag work, double and bag work, speed bag work, shadow boxing, jump rope work. And yes, jump rope is one of the most important things in boxing. I don't know what the hell's wrong with Mikey Garcia that he doesn't jump rope at all, but um, join my Patreon. I'll coach you. I will teach you to be the fighter you want to be, okay? I know everything there is to know about boxing, and I will help you become the fighter you want to be. Check it.